Inflation in the United States has, has reached a 40-year high, causing a rethink of the tariffs on Chinese goods imposed by former U.S. President Donald Trump. Chinese State Councilor and Foreign Minister Wang Yi met with the U.S. Secretary of State Anthony, Anthony Blinken on July the 9th, during which Wang Yi told Blinken that the U.S. should remove additional tariffs on China as soon as possible. As the world economy faces severe challenges, will the U.S. step up to end years of uh, trade tariffs on China. How have these tariffs impacted the U.S. economy? I'm pleased to be joined from Singapore by Bert Hoffman, Director of East Asian Institute and Professor in Practice of Lee Kuan Yew School at the National University of Singapore, and from Beijing by Zhang Jinping, Director General of the Center for Regional Cooperation at the Chinese Academy of International Trade and Economic Cooperation. Gentlemen, welcome to The Point. So as I said, uh, Mr. Wang, told Blinken that the U.S. should remove the additional tariffs that the U.S. launched on Chinese goods and end the unilateral sanctions against Chinese companies. Uh, during a recent conversation between Chinese Vice Premier Liu He and U.S. Treasury Secretary uh, Janet Yellen last week, the Chinese uh, side also expressed concerns about lifting additional tariffs on China. Mr. Zhang, are we seeing signs that probably there can be an end to the U.S. trade war on China? Uh, I think that uh, right now it's too early to say uh, the end of trade war. Uh, because if you look at those released uh, you know, news and resources from the United States, uh, just a part of you know, uh, goods, maybe consumption goods, uh, those uh, additional, tariff, <coughs> uh, additional tariff will be uh, considered to remove. However, they also claim that maybe uh, for some of goods, uh, there will be another additional you know, tariff. This is one thing. Another thing is that I think that uh, right now, actually from <coughs> the U.S. side, uh, you can find that uh, some of U.S. Uh, you know, officials uh, from different departments, uh, they have different voices uh, you know, on tariff issues. They want to uh, make tariff as uh, you know, uh, negotiation uh, tools with Chinese side. Also, uh, they were you know, discuss, they, they are still discussing and debating uh, on this type of issues. Uh, but generally speaking, I think that right now, at this time point, actually from the U.S. side, uh, prior is becoming higher and higher due, due, uh, due to the domestic inflation. Meanwhile, uh, you know, uh, the report from uh, Pearson Institute also shows that uh, U.S. side actually uh, suffering from you know, trade friction and trade war. Uh, in the U United States, uh, you know, more than uh, uh, 200,000 job, job places, uh, you know, happened also uh, for every family. Uh, additional 1,000 U.S. dollars cost, uh, you know, paid by those, uh, you know, consumers, uh, something like that. So right now, I think that it, it's the right time for uh, U.S. side to consider uh, to remove those tariffs as soon as possible. Mm. Professor Hoffman, the Trump administration imposed 25% additional tariff on some 250 billion US dollars worth of goods and 77.5% uh, additional tariff on 120 billion US dollars worth of Chinese goods. Some media report that the US is only considering lifting something like 10 billion dollars out of the total of 370 billion worth of Chinese goods. How likely is this going to happen and uh, what does the White House actually have in mind when deciding how much and whether to lift any of the sanction, uh, the tariffs? Well, look, I, I think there's a lot of interest at stake and indeed uh, the current discussion on 10 billion would only be a, a drop in the bucket, frankly, and it wouldn't help much for inflation. Let's, let's agree on that. It may give a more important signal to China that there is a bit more space to discuss uh, trade issues, uh, and that's of course has been the position of of China. Uh, if but even if overall all tariffs were to be reduced, you only come to a fairly modest impact on inflation. Uh, Barclays had an estimate that uh, estimated about 0.26 percent on inflation. They've been estimate out there of one percent over time. My estimate is very simple. 
the consumers pay $56 billion in tariffs at the moment. That's a total of, of a total of 14 trillion of total consumer spending. So that would reduce about 0.4% uh, in inflation, which is all very, very modest. Really, the inflation, the causes of inflation in the United States are different. But the signal, the political signal towards China would be very important. Mr. Zhang, what's your reaction to Professor Hoffman's uh, statement there, uh, basically that the rollback will have very modest impact on the economic side, but the political side, it would be more significant. Also, uh, what do you think the longer term interests of the United States uh, or impact of these tariffs? On one hand, I think that uh, even if maybe 1.0% to 1.5%, you know, uh, strip uh, or, uh, tariff, uh, actually strip off uh, of, you know, uh, inflation, uh, that means uh, I think that would be a useful, you know, uh, for uh, U.S. side to control inflation. Uh, because you can consider that, uh, you know, after the U.S. side provided, uh, you know, uh, unlimited uh, uh, <coughs> quantitative, uh, you know, uh, easing uh, monetary policy, and then, you know, uh, inflation uh, gradually, you know, in global market becomes stronger and stronger. Uh, I think that's also a very uh, important reason for U.S. domestic inflation. On the other hand, uh, you know, uh, the U.S. side is a seri seriously relying on, you know, import goods. Uh, for example, uh, they imported uh, Chinese goods occupied more than, you know, 15% to 20%, you know, for U.S. imported goods. In this regard, I think that, uh, you know, a tariff removing uh, must be helpful for U.S. side to control, you know, uh, inflation. That's why for, uh, uh, <clears throat> for U.S., you know, some of major officials, uh, you know, al already mentioned many times uh, uh, from last year to this year. However, this is a uh, very complicated issue uh, because, uh, of course, uh, you know, inflation also caused by uh, your imbalance between uh, supply and demand. Uh, in U.S. domestic market, uh, they also need to deal with this type of issues. Uh, of course, uh, <coughs> Another issue that is a political, you know, factors also uh, impact on this process. There is reportedly, as uh, Professor, as Mr. Zhang mentioned, some recognition within the U.S. government that these tariffs have actually not achieved the intended results. Uh, but the U.S. President Joe Biden has said he has not made the decision on the issue and that his administration is going through the tariffs one at a time. Professor Hoffman, what's really making the U.S. government drag its feet uh, given the situation at home on the economic front? Do you think it is really wise for the United States to not to make a bigger decision at a faster pace? Well, first, you're absolutely right to say that, that uh, look, the tariffs haven't done much for the U.S.-China trade deficit. As a matter of fact, 2017, before the tariffs, uh, the total trade deficit between the U.S. and China was $375 billion U.S. dollars. In 2021, it was $353 billion. First quarter this year, $100 billion in deficit. That's a record deficit. Uh, uh, for for the United States and and as Professor Jung said, it, it it is driven by different factors. It is excess demand because of the U.S. stimulus. It is bottlenecks in the supply chain, and it is oil and food price shocks because of the Russian invasion. So many things come together in that inflation. For for Biden, I mean, he's in a bit of a bind. It, it may help a little bit uh, the the reduction in tariffs, but at the same time. Uh, uh, what the Republicans and Democrats can agree on is to be against China. So it's very hard for him to actually move before the midterm elections. Legally, uh, uh, the law requires the administration to review all tariffs, all tariffs imposed. So there would be a report which said whether it helped or not. And I think that could be a more solid basis for moving on the, on the tariffs, which may help a little bit in inflation. I expect the U.S. government not to move before the midterm election simply because of the political controversy. U.S. Trade Representative Catherine Tai said the U.S. needs to keep the tariffs to have more leverage against China in trade negotiations. Mr. Zhang, how much leverage does the U.S. actually have in trade negotiations with China through these tariffs? 
uh, actually, I don't know, you know, uh, what's meaning uh, this type of, you know, leverage or, you know, negotiation tools. Uh, if those tariffs could be useful tools for the U.S. negotiators. However, from, you know, uh, United States, I think that maybe there will be more, you know, meanings from political level instead of, you know, economic level. Uh, if you look at, uh, you know, in the past four years, actually uh, Trump administration claimed that uh, they uh, could use tariff as a useful tool to constrain China's development. Uh, also claimed that uh, in the next 10 years, uh, due to tariff you know, measures, uh, China's economic scale uh, will not surpass that one in the United States. Also, you know, Trump administration also claimed that uh, by you know tariff measures, and then you know uh, the U.S. trade deficit against China will be disappeared. However, today, if you look back, those two uh, targets uh, didn't achieve. Uh, also, on the contrary, you can find that uh, U.S. trade deficit still climbing up. Also, you know China's economy scale is. Uh, closer to that in the United States uh, than one year before. So I think that uh, from the U.S. side, actually, they should consider this type of issues, uh, you know, systematically and comprehensively mm. instead of, you know, just a political concern. Mm. Professor Hoffman, the Biden team is reported to be considering hardening, actually, its economic policy toward China. They're reportedly mulling on launching new probes into Chinese support, state support in their eyes for new technologies under the Section 301 of its Trade Act. Is the U.S. getting getting rid of the, what they think is less useful tariffs, which harm ordinary American consumers, to make space for the more useful, more effective tariffs against Chinese high-tech companies? Well, look, I, I think your observation is right, that the, that, uh, the 301 sections are more damaging to China uh, than, than the tariffs by themselves. Uh, it is also a path which would not lead to a very happy outcome. So one of the happy outcomes would be the U.S. would reduce some of the tariffs and then re-engage in discussions with the with China on some of these issues, such as trades, uh, state support uh, for particular industries, uh, but also important issues such as environment and data flows, all very important issues that have been left hanging uh, and have a much broader discussion on on trade issues that affect both countries and other countries. Mr. Hoffman, do you think it is really the time for the United States to be hardening its economic policy against China, given the kind of economic situation that the United States is faced with, and basically the whole world is uh, experiencing challenging times due to COVID, due to the conflict, due to the you know food insecurity, and so on and so forth? Well, you're right. It is not a very it's not a very good time, and and uh, the Biden agenda is really much more domestic than international. I don't think they're focusing too much on the international side, on the trade side. The domestic agenda for the U.S. is very important, and I hope that they have much more success there, because a confident and strong United States will probably be a better partner internationally, also for China. For China. They have, of course, uh, uh, declared that they want to become a member of the, the CPTPP, uh, the uh, trade agreement uh, that is led by Japan but uh, includes a number of countries. Some of those issues that, that are a pain for the United States, such as state support, such as data, uh, they're actually being treated well in the CPTPP. So I actually think that there's a good common ground to have a more in-depth discussion rather than the sanctions route, the 301 route that will be damaging for China, but it will also be damaging for the rest of the world. Many thanks to Bert Hoffman, Director of East Asia Institute and Professor in Practice of Lee Kuan Yew School at the National University of Singapore, and Mr. Jiang Jinping, Director General of the Center for Regional Cooperation at the Chinese Academy of International Trade and Economic Cooperation.